Today I'm going to show you how I bet a rifle. Now keep in mind that I don't think with the method that we're going to use it can really compete with somebody that has all the machine, the CNC lays that can uh, clean out the bedding material when it's done and make it look in, as pretty as some of those jobs out there. But I think that uh, if you follow us on social media that you'll see that our rifles are all shooting very accurately so this bedding method does work uh, the goal is to have obviously an accurate rifle but the point of bedding is to have a stress-free relationship between the action and the stock and have it be as perfectly made it as possible so stay tuned let's walk through the process all right, I'm gonna do my best to keep everything in frame here. Um, try to cover all the bases. There's there's a lot. It's it's a really simple task, but it you really do have to pay attention to the details. Um, you, you don't want to get in a hurry. So let's talk about uh, the before we even get started you need to set the barreled action into the stock and check for fit. Everything should fit as if you were going to go shoot the rifle without bedding it. So this one uh, was rubbing over here on the left hand side of the barrel channel. Um, I've seen people tape the barrel to make the barrel set square in the channel. I don't agree with that it's inducing stress or possibly inducing stress into the system before we even get started. What you need to do is set it in there, torque it down, make sure there is no interference in the barrel channel whatsoever. And we will check it again after bedding and if we need to we will relieve some more material. I've set it in here, like I said it was rubbing on the left hand side. I went ahead and relieved that and so that should be good. Um, what uh, we're going to need some release agent. I use Quick uh, or sorry Kiwi shoe polish. So we will use that and we will put it everywhere we think something might uh, want to stick to the bedding that we do not want to stick to the bedding. All right, for cleanup, I just get some cotton balls. Brand doesn't matter. Just get some cotton balls and quick uh, Q-tips. We are going to use Marine Tex. Okay, get some popsicle sticks. You can find them in uh, Walmart in the hobby section. Um, I'm sure most places that have have craft type stuff will have these. And uh, I'm going to show you one real quick. I snip them off with some side cutters so that I can get a nice knife edge for cleaning up when we're done. We'll run this down the edge here. Okay, I use WD-40 for cleaning. I found acetones and that type of stuff get into the bedding and, and uh, when you pull it apart it's all bubbly or doesn't look nice. This will clean it and won't erode the bedding material. Okay, and then I reuse this. It's not that big a deal. This is modeling, modeling clay. So I'm not going to show you every single thing that we are going to do, but you're going to want to put modeling clay anywhere you don't want bedding material in, in uh, the crevices, in these little trigger holes, and that uh, the where the trigger goes. Um, I don't typically take my side bolt release out, but I will put. Uh, some modeling clay in that area and then we're going to put a put it in here in the magazine well I'll probably record all this and then just speed it up so you don't have to sit and watch it but this isn't mandatory this putting it in the magazine well is not mandatory but it will speed up 
the cleanup process. Okay, fill that fill that bolt release with it, or the bolt uh, relief where the bolt goes, not the bolt release. And you want this down in there so it doesn't interfere with the action. Get it pressed in there nice and neat so that the bedding material doesn't have anywhere to squeeze. We'll set this in here, squish it down. Slowly pull it out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Clean this little shelf right there off. All right, I'll try to show you here. Once I get it close, and we may do this a couple times, you want to get it right. I'll uh, run floss. Down. And get it cleaned up. Don't be stingy with this. I've taken the side bolt release out. I've left it in. I don't. I don't really see a difference. Um, if you feel better doing it, then go ahead and do it. Um, I'll be able to get that out with some uh, all-purpose cleaner. Okay. So I got everything that I want um, on the action that I don't want to. Uh, getting bedding into the crevices and I've got everything that I want here okay what I'm gonna do next and the order that you do this doesn't matter just go slow be methodical stop think make sure everything that you're doing makes sense because once you stick this together you can't have it back I will go ahead and uh, this is has pillars aluminum pillars I'll go ahead and uh, dremel around I don't bed up here um, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get some modeling clay up here in front of the recoil lug. We'll smash that down. A little cart slowly that usually that piece wants to stay I can't I struggle with that every time it's not important we can always clean this out with a Dremel it it's just I've bedded be, be uh, in front of the recoil lug and I've I've left it I don't see any problem leaving it uh, unbedded. You just want to keep it out of the recoil lug area though. We'll clean that up real quick before we stick bedding compound. We'll clean that up with a screwdriver.
if this was inletted correctly, there will be very, very little clay there. That's why it's hard. That's why it's uh, difficult to get to stick. Okay, we got all that out of there. All right, so I've got it looking like I want. Um, like I said, it's got aluminum pillars. We're just going to dremel some spots for the uh, bedding compound to go. These a lot of these newer stocks or most of them are C CNC inleted, so that there isn't a lot of room and and it won't stick if you don't make room for it. Try to stay away from the carbon. I mean, the, it's not a huge deal because bedding material will splash out and it will take care of any imperfections you cause, but it, it just uh, better to avoid it. Don't, don't be touching the pillars. I like to leave a little shelf around here so you're just uh, gonna fill in the low spots. You'll leave a little high spot there. Look at the tang area. Okay, I can see right here, we can leave a little bit.
Same thing back here, you want to try to stay away from anything that's going to be visible when you're done. Uh, otherwise you'll see the bedding compound, it's not that big a deal, but I really prefer to keep it, keep it cosmetically clean. Um, that should do it. I think we've got everything I want relieved. Got a little, got a little area for all the, the bedding in there. If you got compressed air, use it. I strongly discourage using any uh, chemically uh, cleaning, chemical cleaning, because it's going to interfere. a little bit more up right here. This is definitely a deal where you don't want to be going fast. Okay, I like it. Everything's got a nice little spot for bedding compound to go into. We're going to take a cloth, old sock, something. Um, we're going to take some of this kiwi shoe polish. And uh, we'll rub it all over the action. Make sure you clean up any... Um, Clean up any of that uh, modeling clay in areas where you actually want a mating surface.
Okay, and then you're going to trim a piece of electrical tape. Just trim it up. I know you're probably not going to see this. Trim it up, run it on the bottom of the recoil lug. Now this seems to be fairly controversial. I guess if there is a, well, there's a lot of controversy to how to bed, but um, I personally think that you need to have the back, obviously the the part that's going to be recoiled needs, needs to be touching the bedding compound. That's one of the major points of this. I also think it should be touching there. When you're done with this bedding job, the action, you should be able to turn and turn the rifle upside down with no screws in it. It should stay in there. Um, that's, that's my opinion. I know a lot of people disagree. I've tried it both ways. I really don't see a huge difference um, in accuracy, but I really do think that it's better if the recoil lug is uh, basically pinched in there. Okay, well, put this everywhere. We can always clean it up, put it on the, over the electrical tape, on the front of the recoil lug, put it on your barrel even though we have uh, put a dam in there. Doesn't matter, get it everywhere. Get it on this, uh, in the port opening. This stuff will ooze everywhere. Get it on where the bolt handle goes get it back on the tang so when it squeezes up over the tang like I said we can clean all of this up what you can't do is undo it when it's sticky okay what you don't want is you don't want any clumps of this it's gonna look like a matte pasty but you don't want to see clumps, okay? I've got, I've got that ready to set in there. Um, now, another thing that this is, this is, I would say, controversial, and I think a lot of people would probably disagree with me. That's fine. I usually use the action screws. Um, I've tried this both ways, and I prefer the action screws we will coat the coat them just as much as you can possibly get shoe polish on them they make studs specifically for this i've used them they work great um, i don't have a problem with them but i find action screws to be a little bit better and one of the things you need to take note of though is we don't want to torque this down that's defeating the purpose that's going to induce stress so you just want to tighten them um, the biggest reason why i prefer this is if we we put the bottom metal in there and we let let it uh, we, we tighten it down a little bit we will get the action centered i just find it better than the the method with the studs um, I've seemed to have some studs kind of kind of torque it a little bit. And this action is not screwed to the barrel. It's not torqued to the barrel. So I'm actually going to put a little bit in, a little bit of uh, shoe polish in. Inside, actually, I'm going to use Q-tip. I'm going to put a little bit of shoe polish inside on the lugs, and, and I will clean the crap out of this one when we're done. I'm going to screw this on just to keep any squeeze. from getting into the spots we don't want it. Okay, I'm gonna do one last cursory coat.
Okay, and I'm gonna call that good. I think we're good. Okay, so we got everything uh, like we want it. We've got a nice spot for the bedding material to go. We've got uh, everything slicked up for release agent with the Kiwi shoe polish, and we've got everything uh, dammed up where we do not want the material to go using the modeling clay. Okay, so now I'm gonna get this all, get this all out of the way. I'm gonna grab a little plate to mix with. We're going to mix up our marine techs. Now, I'm not, not going to show you this, but we're just going to read the directions. Um, I always keep them and I set them back in there. So we're going to do one part catalyst to five parts resin. Not something I remember. So here is the resin. So this can. And then here's the catalyst. I, I can't find that the resin is labeled, but the catalyst is. So we're going to keep these notes out here. Um, Marine Tex has a pretty good working time, so we're going to go slow. Mix up more than you think you need. You don't want to have to remix. So, five parts of resin. You just, I eyeball this. I'll kind of show you when I get it. Like I said, don't be don't be stingy with this. You want to mix it once and be done with it. While I'm mixing this, the the most important part of this is getting release agent on everything that you don't want stuck because everything else we can clean up. We can sand it, grind it down, uh, send it to a gunsmith, re and let it. If it doesn't, if you glue it in there, it's a lot more difficult. So I got, I got the resin that I want. Okay. I'll show you this is this is the amount we're going to start with and it's way way too much and that's fine. So basically you want 5 to 1. You can always add more catalyst. So I'll show you try to show you the best I can. It's going to be fairly runny. when we're done.
It needs to be very consistent in its consistency. It needs to be very uh, evenly. You can't have lumps. It's going to take you a while to mix it. Again, patience is your friend. You shouldn't have any of that hard. Again, Marine Tex has a very, very forgiving set time, so don't get in a hurry here. This needs to be mixed very, very well, or you'll have spots that aren't set, and it it just will it'll mess with your accuracy. It'll affect the shrinkage of the product which there's a lot of studies out there that say marine tex is one of the best if not the best uh, at avoiding shrinkage which is definitely something we want we don't want to be re-bedding our rifles every three or four years because the the bedding compound shrunk That stick's starting to get messy. I'm gonna get a new, I'm gonna get a new mixing stick. There's lots of good products for keeping clean. I found powder, powder blast to be one of the best. You don't want to get it inside where you're going to be bedding because it won't, it won't stick. Okay, this should be, I don't know if you can see that consistent consistency there. This is, this is how we want it. I just got it all over my hands trying to show you. Um, That's the consistency you want. It's a little bit runny. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get it set down in here. You want to try to avoid those screw holes. The action screws. Don't get any in there. Get this pushed down into the recoil lug area, otherwise you'll get bubbles. Made a huge mess trying to show you this. I'll have to, once I get this in here, I have to clean up so I before I touch the action. I found the better you get this pushed into place, you know, kind of smeared like butter on toast. The better you get it smeared where you want it, the less chance you have of it being uh, causing bubbles and stuff. It's okay to get it up on the stock because that WD-40 will clean it. We want to try to keep this stuff on the
clay to a minimum but it's it's going to squirt out there anyways the squeeze will go there Don't be a hurry. The set time on this is is quite long, like I said. Okay, stuff like right there, I don't know, probably can't see it in the camera, but you definitely want to make sure that you have some squeeze here. Otherwise, it, you're going to pull it apart and it won't be covered and it won't it probably isn't going to affect the accuracy, but it's not going to look pretty. Like I said, you can have some spillage here. We'll clean it up with the WD-40. You do not want any getting down in those holes using my method because you're gonna put the screws through there and they'll, they'll squeeze that right into the action. Now, we've done a good job or I've done a good job and you should do a good job of making sure that you got release agent everywhere you need it. Make sure you can't see any of the stock up here at the edges. Like I said, spillage and squeeze is okay. We'll clean it up with WD-40. All right, so I think it looks like, nope, there's a little bit right, right here. Okay. I'm going to clean up and then we'll stick that action in there. I just wanted to show you real quick. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to get it. Powder, powder blast will just eat that right away. Some wipes, it'll be off your hands and you won't be rubbing it all over everything and getting it in your action, on your stock. It's okay to have the squeeze, but if you start spreading real thin areas, it's harder to get off. Okay, right off. Okay, I'm going to take another popsicle stick and we'll get this... cleaned up around that screw. Okay, now using my method, this is important. We're gonna set the action in there and then we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna use the bottom metal to help hold the uh, action in. We've got everything dammed up, it shouldn't uh, shouldn't make it there the only issue is your if you didn't get your action screws lubed up enough okay so here goes the moment of truth we're going to set this in here try to get it lined up as best you can
All right. Everything looks good. Go ahead and get this back in here so you can see. Okay, now we're just going to take some popsicle sticks. This will speed up the process if you don't, if you just go straight to the If you go straight to the cotton balls, it's going to be very messy. Just get as much of it as you can scraped off with the popsicle stick. And we will clean up the rest, starting with, let's go ahead and get this thrown away. Clean up the rest, starting with uh, cotton balls. Again, don't be stingy. Your hands, your hands are going to be messy. It's fine. Get, get this off of everywhere you don't want it. Pay attention to everywhere, you're probably going to find bedding compound in places you wouldn't have expected it to get. Just clean up everything, wipe down the entire stock. Be diligent and don't stop cleaning.
And once you have it, so you can't really get any more. Take Q-tips, and I've said it a hundred times, I think, already. Don't be stingy. Don't be stingy with Q-tips. Don't be stingy with the WD-40. If you left the side bolt release in, spend a lot of time there. It does, it does squeeze in there. I'm not going to lie, if it makes you feel better, you can take it out. But I have not had any problems with it since. As long as you are diligent in your cleaning, it won't create an issue. They are easy to take out. I, I have just found if you take them out, the bedding compound, even though I use a lot of modding clay, the bedding compound gets in there just as bad, if not worse, than if I leave it. I've had zero issues doing it this way. Okay, in this little recess right here, make sure you get get it cleaned out really well. It'll tend to squeeze into the raceways here. Okay, got that good. We'll move on. Move on up here. Right, the cotton balls usually get this pretty good. Okay, now take a look on the stock. Make sure you don't see any spills, any streams, like where it might have spilled over. Wipe it all down real good. Still a little bit there. Okay, any of this that's left over, it's gonna flake off pretty much as soon as you take it out of the stock, it'll it'll come right up. So make sure we don't have any bedding that bedding material in that side bolt release. It looks good. Don't want that. Powder. Okay, I like it. 
Like I said, make sure you don't have any spillage that you didn't see. Okay. I think that covers the bedding. The one thing I'll and I'll try to mention as we're cleaning this up. The my method is going to screw going to squeeze a little bit of bedding material into where the bolt lug would ride. So about 12 hours from now, so like tomorrow morning, um, I would come back that front screw out um, and then back it in. Usually it'll fall out and we'll make sure we clean it. If you do not take the barrel off, you need to make sure that you're tipping it up so it falls out the back. If, if, uh, if you don't see it, you need to make sure it doesn't go into the bore. And I'll try to talk about that again when we're cleaning this up. But uh, now it's time to go grab an iced tea, your favorite, your favorite beer, whiskey, because you're going to be sitting here waiting for a while. Don't fret. As long as you clean it up and you got release agent everywhere that it should be, this thing is going to fall right out when we uh, take the action screws apart and uh, we'll start the cleanup process. So it's been 24 hours. We're going to go ahead and take this apart and then uh, walk through the cleanup process. So we're going to flip it over here. And I did uh, about 12 hours in. About 12 hours in, I did break these loose. So we just came down here and snapped them loose and then basically put it right back where it was. Reiterate here that we were trying to get a stress free. So although I did use these screws, we didn't torque them down We basically just align that use them to align the action in there. Otherwise you have the uh, chance of the Barrel twisting into the channel Some bedding material usually gets down in the screw where the screws go, the bolts. So you may have to pull on it a little bit. Okay. Threads look good on those. Right, like I said, right in here, uh, part of the cleanup process is I'll run a drill down through there uh, to make sure that that's clear. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pop this out. <clears throat> Should be able to just wiggle it out. Okay, we'll set that over there. Okay, we're gonna start. Uh, just start working Working through here pull that piece of electrical tape out of there And we'll start pulling this clay out Probably, I'm probably not going to film all this, so you're going to pull all the clay out and then I'll show you how we're going to clean up the, the bedding material there. Get all of the clay off of the action, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I clean this up with what I would consider somewhat basic tools. Alright, <clears throat> so I've got it all cleaned up, and I'll take it apart and let you look at it. Uh, but in my opinion, when when it's done, this is what should happen. It should not fall out. I think that's how a proper bedding job should be. Um, I guess I still got some more cleaning to do. You need to make sure you have everything cleaned up because you don't want that getting in inside your chamber. 
You don't want it in your trigger. Any anywhere inside of the action or the receiver is not going to be good. So be very liberal with your cleaning solution. I, I do want to show you, see if I can get this in here. This is the tool, and I'll try to find, I think I bought this on Amazon, but you can buy it in a hardware store anywhere. I'll try to put a link in the description to this. This one I actually did such a good job of getting it uh, prepped, I really didn't need to use this, but I chucked this up in a in a drill press and then go through and clean the edges of the magazine well. It, I find it to be one of the best ways to get it done. Purely cosmetic and it's not going to look as good as it, it would with uh, like a, a real lathe CNC machine and stuff like that. But it's going to make it look pretty good uh, for a home job. The most important part is right here in the tang area and then right here. Um, so I, I think this turned out pretty good. It, it's probably in my you know top five. Some are better than others. That like I said, the most important thing isn't really the cosmetics. It's that it's stress free sitting in here, and uh, then obviously no point of impact shifts, and you've got the accuracy that the rifle is capable of. So uh, that's it. That's how I bed a rifle.